Welcome everybody to this week's lecture. It's going to be on how to develop your first supporting paragraph for your first map point in your thesis statement. And we're going to talk about how do we develop the meat of our essay. Now we've already looked at how do we do the introduction. And we started with some background information about our topic that was in purple. And then we came and we transitioned into um, a particular hook that we could use. In this case, I had two in orange. It was a statistic. And in red, it was a personal anecdote or a personal story. So I used two hooks for this essay, both orange and red. And then we talked about how do we take our hooks and our, um, our personal story and transition it into our thesis statement. That was in green. And then our blue was our thesis. So what do we do when we're ready to write the, the next three parts of our essay? Because we're going to do a five paragraph essay here. Well, we're going to take apart our thesis and we're going to look at each of the causes or each of the effects, the three that you chose, and each one of those are going to be a paragraph of its own. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose a different thesis here. And I'm going to make this really big for you so you can see it. So here we have the next, the thesis that I kind of want to work on, that I chose to, to work on. So here's the thesis. Rex Wall's alcoholism affected his children in harmful ways. They often went without food. They witnessed his violence against their mother. They were left alone to handle adult situations. Okay, so what's also part of this week is I asked you to put in your journal about the glass castle for for this particular class it's going to be in week eight but what i asked you to do is go back through the book and what we've read so far and go pull out examples that you can use so that you could illustrate your point on how they went without food for the first supporting paragraph and then how they saw the violence for the second supporting paragraph, and then how they handled adult situations for the third. Now this is my thesis, so obviously I'm going to have to go into the book and I'm going to go have to find out different examples to help prove my thesis, the different points in my thesis. And remember, the controlling ideas, the things that narrow your essay in your thesis are called map points. They take your reader to the different places they need to go to Prove your thesis and what you're talking about, okay? They're the main points you're trying to make, called map points. So I have three map points, and my map points happen to be the causes of what um, the effects are. Sorry, and this is the effects of the alcoholism on his children. So I have three of those. What were the three effects of the alcohol alcoholism, which was the cause? So what I went and did is I went back through the book and I went and found on different pages all the different examples that would help me support each of these map points. So what you can do in your own journal, and your journal can look um, somewhat like mine, except that you're going to have your own, your own examples, but I'm just going to model it for you. So I put my three supporting paragraphs. I said, children going hungry, that's my first point. Right here, they often went without food. And the second one witnessed violence against their mother. They witnessed his violence against their mother. That was going to be supporting paragraph two. And then they were left alone to handle adult situations. And I just put handling adult situations at an early age. So those are the three that I've got to go back now and support. So let's start with my first map point, children going hungry. And I went back and I went through pages in the book that I could remember that struck me that in my head I thought oh poor kids or well that that's interesting so um, I gave you the different pages here and you're going to need to do that as well so when you make your journal entry for week eight what I should see is all your notes for your supporting points for your three supporting paragraphs with the page numbers and the reason why you want to put the page numbers is Number one, so you can go back and find your examples if you need to, to work on them a little bit. And number two, in your story, as you write your paragraph, you're going to cite that page number for your reader to show that you are using Jeanette's information 
in your paper. And so you're going to cite that page number in your in your um, your paragraph. Okay. So here's some things I remembered. I remembered that the kids ate ir um, the kids eat irregularly, not often like everybody else. Most pe other people do. So I remembered the story about the cantaloupe that fell off the train, and that the father brought home crates of these cantaloupe for their children to eat. But that's that's all they ate were these cantaloupes. For days, no meat, you know, no cheese, no milk, none of the wheats and grains and berries and nuts and things that, other things that would keep you healthy, but these cantaloupes that they ate for days. Okay, so, and I've got that on page 22. And then I remembered in the book, later on in the book, it talked about that children only had popcorn to eat. And so they ate that for several days. And one instant, they ate it for three days straight. It was on page 187. And then another point where sometimes when the food ran out, they would eat cat food. Um, because cat food back then was pretty cheap. It was cheaper than meat and other things that you could buy. And then another instance was mom eating chocolate. Um, you, you may not be at this particular part in the book right now, but um, I do remember it from my reading that she, she was hiding the chocolate and eating it herself and not sharing it with her kids. And then um, Jeanette had to hunt through the trash at school so she could get the leftover food from the girls that threw their trash away in the bathroom. And so she would go into the garbage and she would look around and try to find good food to eat. So that's how she ate during the day was to get out of the garbage can. I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six examples here. It doesn't mean I have to use all of them. But what it's doing is it gives me an opportunity to... Um, use as many as I want. And she sh you should at least have three to four examples from the book for every map point that you're doing here, okay? So I'm going to build paragraph one with you. You'll see me build it so you can have an understanding of how I think when I go through this, okay? So here are all my examples and my thesis is what guides me throughout my whole essay. This is what I'm working on here. Here's the examples I'm going to use for one. And I'll tie all those together. And you will notice that in my book as well, or in my, my paragraph as well, I'm going to bring up uh, the first one, page 22. And when I start to write this, you will notice that I will not copy word for word what the author says. My job, everybody, is to make sure that I am using her examples, but not copying her words, word for word. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you. So when you see how I build my first sentences, you can see that I don't copy every word from her. I'm paraphrasing, which is what you need to do. So <clears throat> she said, we're sort of like the cactus, and that means they eat sometimes. She said, we ate irregularly, and when we did, We'd gorge ourselves, which means you would make yourself, you would eat so much at one time, you would almost make yourself sick. Once, when we were living in Nevada, a train full of cantaloupes heading east jumped the track. I had never eaten a cantaloupe before, but Dad brought home crates and crates of them. We had fresh cantaloupe, stewed cantaloupe, even fried cantaloupe. Okay, so that's how she words it. So now I'm going to start writing my first sentence. And I'm going to go into um, this first part of my sentence and in my paragraph. Now, every one of your supporting paragraphs should have a topic sentence of their own. The topic sentence is that one sentence that you tell the reader what that paragraph is going to be about. Well, what's this paragraph going to be about? It's going to be about how the children went hungry because Rex alcoholism prevented him from working and, and bringing home money and food for the family. So I need to tell my reader in this topic sentence what information I'm going to share with them, and it's only going to be, the, be this information. So here's the topic sentence that I'm going to write from my first supporting paragraph. Rex Wall's alcoholism prevented him from holding down a steady job, and as a result, the children have had um, often had little to no food. Okay, 
So I'm going to prove that with all of these examples right here. I'm going to prove that. So each of you now will need to write down a topic sentence for each of your supporting paragraphs, and then all of your examples have to stick to that topic sentence, okay? The topic sentences in my appointment are, are easier because all you have to do is find a sentence that covers this information right here. So my second one is going to be about that information right here. And the third one is going to be about this information. So my topic sentence is just going to include whatever my map points are. Okay? So let's get started. Let's see how I can start this. So I'm going to leave my topic sentence and let me start with my first part of um, my paragraph. So let's start paragraph one. Now I've typed this and I'm just going to paste it just to be faster for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me type. But this is what um, the first thing I came up with. So I started with my topic sentence. Notice that I have my topic sentence fully copied in the very beginning of the paragraph. It stops right there. And then I start the sentence off and then I'll say, there are several instances of the children going hungry as Jeanette points out in her story. So notice I'm, I'm bringing the book back in so that the reader doesn't forget that I'm, I'm talking about Jeanette and I'm talking about the book that she wrote. And then I use this verb, she recounts. Now I could say she said, or she talked about a time, or she tells us about a time. But when you're remembering back to something, let me show you some verbs you can use. I'll just put them here real quick. She recounts, that means that she goes back and tells us. We could say she remembers a time. We can say she recalls a time. We could say she looks back at a time. Okay, so try not to always just use the verb said because then that, that doesn't really give us all the information in that verb that could tell the story because when we use the verb remember, we know that she's going back in time and she's bringing up this memory. memory. The same for recalls and same for recounts. Okay, so this, these verbs give us a little bit more interest and a little bit more information in each of the verbs. So she recounts a time when they were living in Nevada and they were not eating regularly. Okay, so the book said we ate irregularly. And then how did I bring that out in my story? I brought it out in my story this way. We'll get rid of this one here. The way I brought it out in the story, I says, I said, we were not eating or they were not eating regularly, which is the same way of saying we ate irregularly. But instead of copying this information, which would be plagiarism and cheating, okay, I just reworded it to say we were not or they were not eating regularly. Um, and then I said she says that one time there was a train that was transporting cantaloupes and many spilled out of the train when the train when the train crashed. Well, I didn't tell about Dad bringing home crates and crates of that. Um, I didn't say that she had never eaten cantaloupes before, but I just did say that the train had crashed. The way it is in the book, it said that the train was full of cantaloupes heading east and jumped the track. And the way I word it, as I said, there was a train that was transporting cantaloupes and many spilled out of the train when the train crashed. I didn't say the train jumped the track because if I say the train jumped the track, then I'll be copying her way words and that's plagiarism. Okay, so we don't want to do that. And then I said the family gathered up the cantaloupe and made many meals from it, including frying the cantaloupe as well as eating it fresh. I just changed the order of the frying the cantaloupe and eating it fresh. Down here, she says, we had fresh cantaloupe, stewed cantaloupe, and even fried cantaloupe. And I said, um, they made many meals from it, including frying the cantaloupe as well as eating it fresh. So I'm changing the order. I'm changing some of the structure because I want to make sure that I'm not using all of her words um, exact word for word. Now, the only thing I would change here is that this said that dad brought home the cantaloupes. So I don't remember. So I have to go change this. 
I said, the family gathered up the cantaloupes. But this said the father, right? So I just have to correct this because my memory didn't remember it as good. So I'll just say the father gathered up the cantaloupe. And the family made many meals from it. So now I've got a little bit more of a correct statement. All right, so now let's take a look at um, what can I say next? Well, let me go to my second example. Uh, they were on, only ate popcorn for three days, so let me go see how I can talk about that one. So I'm going to pay, go over to page 187 in the, the Glass Castle, because that's going to be my next example that I wrote down. It's talking about the children uh, eating popcorn, as you can see over here. And down towards the bottom, Jeanette's saying to Mom, we haven't had anything to eat but popcorn for three days, I said. You're always so negative, she said. You remind me of my mother. Criticize, criticize, criticize. I'm not being negative, I said. I'm trying to be realistic. And Mother goes on to say, I'm, I'm doing the best under the circumstances, and you always blame me for everything. Okay, so here's, here's that instance when she's talking about the popcorn. So I'm going to incorporate it into my essay. So I'm going to come down here, and I need to write a sentence that transitions me from the cantaloupe example to the popcorn example. So I'll write a sentence that gives me that transition. <clears throat> I'm just going to copy and paste here what I wrote. So I say, later in the story, she talks about how the kids only had popcorn to eat for three days and went to their mother to complain about it. The mother responded that all the kids ever did was to criticize her and told the kids that once they ate, they would be better again. Going hungry now and again would permanently, uh, would not, so I shouldn't say, would not permanently hurt them. And that's on page 188. And so let's go to page 188, and I can show you where she kind of said that, but I've paraphrased it. So I'm putting these two pages together with uh, 187 on the right and 188 on the left. So I read 187 to you. Now let's come over here and let's, um, and let's find out what mom is saying about the kids. She's talking about she doesn't want to go on welfare to get money for food because she thinks that permanently damages kids. What she does say is that you can be hungry every now and then, but once you eat, you're okay, she said, and you can get a cold for a while, but you always warm up. But once you're on welfare, it changes you. You never get off of it, she says. But I'm not going to use the welfare example. I, I could. I could go back and use that. But right now, I'm just talking about mom's attitude about the children's hunger. So we'll go back to now my paper, and you've seen how I've written it. And we'll bring that up. So I say, and this is all in my own words. I don't copy anything from her. Later in her story, she talks about how the kids only had popcorn to eat for three days. And she, and then I should say here, instead of um, the kids went to the mother and Jeanette went to her mother. So I'll make this more now that I reread this. Went to her mother. So it wasn't all the kids, it was just Jeanette. So Jeanette went to her mother to complain about it. The mother responded that all the kids ever did was to criticize her and told the kids that once they ate, they would be better again. Going hungry now and again would not permanently hurt them. So I just again paraphrased whatever she said. And then I put the page numbers. But since I had two pages here, then I went ahead and put the span of pages that I found those examples on. So, um, and told the kids once they ate that she told Jeanette. So I'm gonna change that real quick. <coughs> uh, that once they ate, they would be better again. Okay, so I've made my changes here, but there is one thing I wanna tell you. I, I might wanna change a little bit of my thesis statement because 
Notice that in my thesis statement, I say they often went without food. That's true, but my examples talk about how they get a little bit of food. So let's make sure that my thesis statement is correct. I'm going to say they often went without food um, or had little food. Or I could say this, they often had little to no food. So I could say here, they often went um, with little to no food. I could put it that way as well. So I could change this. They often went with little or no food. And then that way, the reason why I wanted to take time to change this on my thesis is because I can't talk about them having no food at all and then in my examples, in my paragraph down here, talking about, yeah, they had no food, but then they did find some. They found cantaloupe, they had popcorn. So I had to change my thesis so it would be a little more accurate, okay? Let's go to the next example. I did want to bring up the transition. So when I started talking about the cantaloupe, then I um, went into the part about the popcorn Here's a transition to that. I said later in her story. So you want to move your reader from one example to the next example without just listing the examples. So we have to be led through your particular examples. And, um, and on the two pages, you will see I talk about popcorn. I talk about the three days. I talk about mother feeling like she's criticized. But I don't talk about it in a way that is the exact wording that the mother said. So she said, you can be hungry every now and then, but once you eat, you're okay. And I said, the mother responded that all the kids ever did was criticize her and told Jeanette that once they ate, they would be better again. You notice, what I try to do is once I read the passage, I don't look at the book again for a little bit. I just try to write as if I was explaining to a friend what I just read. And then I go back and kind of check my work from there. As you notice, I had to edit it because I got some of the story wrong. When I walked away from the story and then I wrote it down, well, I got a few details a little wrong. And when I went back to read the story, I went, oh, okay, it was only Jeanette that went to her mother, not the three children, so I'm going to change that. But that just goes to prove to you that I actually, I, I step away from the book and write it in my own words so I'm not influenced by all the words I see in the book and I don't feel this <clears throat> temptation to copy all those words that she uses, okay? So let's take a look at a few more examples. We'll go up here. So eating cat food, page 171. So I went over to that page and I read what they did. <clears throat> so what I did here, I actually took two of my examples, eating cat food, page 171, because there was only like two sentences about that. And then I took my example D, Brian and Jeanette foraging for food. That means searching for, foraging means searching for food. And I just combined them into one example. So this is how I wrote it. Let me show you. <clears throat> First, I wanted a transition a sentence to my next example. So I say, Jeanette tells of other times so the reader knows now I'm going away from the popcorn incident and now I'm going to go into my incident that is next. In this case, it's going to be about cat food and it's going to be about Jeanette and Brian going and uh, looking for food outside the house. So my transition, transition phrase is Jeanette tells of other times the children had little to, little to nothing to eat because neither parent was bringing them money. At times... The children ate cat food. That I got that from page 171. When there was little food in the house. At desperate times, Brian and Jeanette would go in search of food, sometimes um, eating tough corn, usually fed to cattle. So there's a place in the book, uh, also on page 172, that talks about how Brian and Jeanette would go outside of the house, and sometimes the farmers would feed the, the cows corn, and then they would gather up that corn. It's very hard 
But if they ate it and chewed it long enough, then they would be able to get something out of that very brittle corn. So I just, I combined the, the cat food and the corn together because it was really around the same time she was talking about it. And then the third and the last one, or I should say the last one I use is about um, Jeanette hunting through the trash at school for food. I thought that was one of the most powerful examples, so I end with that example in my paragraph. It was on pages 173 and 174. So I've got to transition to that last example, and then I'm going to talk about it. So here is what I wrote. So I'll go ahead and paste that for you. So I said, and in the sixth grade, Jeanette remembers she would go into the restroom and go through the trash because it is where her classmates would throw out the remainder of their lunches. She would try to keep some of the leftover food to bring home to Brian. So this illustrates right here just how desperate they were and um, and how little food they had in the home. If they have to be digging through trash cans, then there's very little food to eat. Now, I could say more about what she saw. I could say the kinds of food that she got um, out of the trash can, how she tried to hide the fact that she was taking food from the trash can. You know, I could add that in there, that she was embarrassed. But really, what's my main point? My main point of this, the children often had little or no food. And that's, that's my thesis, not my thesis, but this is my topic sentence. And I saw every instance here needs to support that they had little or no food. Okay. So um, I think that's a lot of examples to be using for this paragraph. I wanted to make sure that my reader really could understand that these children had little to nothing to eat. And uh, now I need a concluding sentence. So if I'm going to come down here and uh, put my concluding sentence in here, what I need to do is I need to tie this topic sentence again and kind of give a summary of all this that types back into that topic sentence. So what I wrote was the following. So I taped my conclusion to this last part of the paragraph and I've color coded it for you and I'll explain that in just a minute but here's what we're working on. So it is clear that Rex Wall's inability to feed his children because of his alcohol addiction, addiction forced his children to find other means of getting food though they were often left hungry and without sufficient nourishment. So one of the important things was is to tell our reader that we're coming to a conclusion. We've stopped with our specific examples, but now we want to tell them that we're going to sum this up. We're going to make a summary. We're going to restate our thesis. Um, actually, not our thesis. We're going to restate our topic sentence, which is up here in the purple. And we're going to say it in a little bit different way. We're not going to copy it word for word, but we'll summarize it to let the reader know, OK, I'm done with this paragraph. I finished talking about how the children were hungry. And I'm about to go into my next supporting paragraph. So one way to go into conclusion, I said, so it's clear. I could put words like this. Um, it is evident that, OK, I could do it that way. Or I could say, um, therefore, it seems that, I could put something like that. It appears that Rex Wall's uh, inability to feed his children. And we could say many different types of conclusions from that. But I do want to let the readers know I'm going to go to a conclusion in my first supporting paragraph. And I just, I just can't throw that conclusion in there. So I just need a few words to let my readers know I'm making this transition. So therefore, it appears that Rex Walls, and that, that I think is sufficient. So let's take a look at what I have color coded here. In purple, I have my topic sentence. And that topic sentence tells the reader what point I'm going to make in this particular paragraph. 
And this topic sentence is going to refer back to my first topic, map point, in my thesis right here. So it's, it's very important that we match each of these. And that's what the reader is going to expect you to do in an academic essay. Your reader is going to expect you to do that. So I'm going to put purple back to where I put this first map point. My yellow is highlighted to show that every single thing that I write after that are going to be supporting examples, details, illustrations that all talk about how these children had little or no food. And they all come from the book. That's why I have the page number. And they're all relevant. I don't talk about his abuse here. I don't talk about anything else. I don't talk about his, his last point of the children um, doing adult type, handling adult situations. That all is going to be in the next paragraphs to come. Okay? So I won't build all three of my supporting paragraphs with you, but I'll get started on the topic sentence for each one of them, just so you can see how I pull it out of this thesis down into the supporting paragraph. So what's my next map point in my thesis? The next map point in my thesis is they witnessed his violent acts against his mother or their mother. So I'm going to come down here and I've just wrote a little topic sentence. The next effects of Rex Wall's alcoholism was his abusive behavior towards the mother. And I think towards Rosemary Walls or what we, we can call, we can be more specific and say against, or, okay. And then in yellow, I'll have all of my details that support that. And what are all my details that support it? Well, it's what I wrote in my journal for this week. I wrote uh, Witness Violence Against the Mother, and I went into the book, like I told you in the beginning, I went to the book and I talked about uh, the cussing at the mother in front of the children, talked about he chasing the mom with the car and dragging her back into the car and pinning her up against the rocks while yelling prof profane and foul names at her right in front of the children, scaring the children half to death. And the children in the car and the father's speeding and cussing and going after the mother. So this is all witnessed by the children. And then the, the last one where the father was holding the mother out the window and she was dangling her legs out the window and there were people down below the second story and they were all watching what was happening, happening including the children were watching what was happening, their mother being held out the window. So I will use those three instances in the book to prove my point of how these children witnessed violence against the mother. And then the third one, we're talking about the children hand, having to handle adult situations at an early age. Well, a couple of those were the sexual assaults against Jeanette, that child molester in Phoenix. The other one was Billy Deal on Battle Mount, Mountain. And then there was one where father takes Brian to a house of prostitution. And then the last one that I was going to use was when Jeanette was 10 years old, she had to ask her father to quit drinking and uh, to tie him to the bed. So when he went through his, his withdrawal, his delirium, his hallucinations, that he couldn't get up and find a drink. Well, that's a lot to ask for a 10-year-old. That should be handled by adults. But the mother wasn't an adult, and there was nobody else there to be an adult, so she had to, had to handle that situation. So I'm going to take those five examples there and I'm going to put it into my third supporting paragraph, but I need a topic sentence for that third supporting paragraph. So what could we say about that third supporting paragraph? Um, I could say maybe something, one of the greatest effects of Rex Wall's alcoholism I always tie it back to the alcoholism was how the children had to handle adult situations to um, because their parents
were not around to help. Or they gave ineffective responses. And I might, I might clean that up a little bit. That's my first try. I was just making it up as I was talking to you guys here. And so I might, I might go back and read that and go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'm going to trim it, or I'm going to add different words. But for now, that might be my third topic sentence from my third supporting paragraph. And I'll add all those details in. So at least I've done the first one with you. I showed you how to put the page numbers in there after you're finished with each example, showed you how to write your topic sentence that matched your thesis statement, and um, showed you that you need a concluding sentence for each of your supporting paragraphs. Okay, so go out there, work on this. You've got a whole nother week to, to try to put this together. That's why I didn't give you that much homework for this week. I only told you to write in your journals so that you can record all your examples that you're gonna use in your supporting paragraphs. And I just let you catch up on your introductions and then write this. So this week you're just doing more of your writing and I'm giving you time to do this because writing's a process and probably the biggest time consuming thing for you guys is taking the examples out of the book but not copying word for word what she says. Paraphrasing the information that you're going to use in the paper. Okay, I will see you guys online in class. Have a great, great week.